As you may well know, Fallout 4 is a Bethesda-developed title, and because of that, Fallout 4 has one very specific feature that pretty much every Bethesda game has, and what I'm talking about here is the console. Now this console allows you to execute a vast array of commands that edit stuff in the game. So for example you can change the scale of things, you can change different values of your character. Uh, basically think of something that you want to do in Fallout 4, you can do it through console commands. So first things first, how do we access the console? Well if you're on the American layout of the keyboard, look up to above the tab key and next to the number one key and you'll find the tilde key. Press that and the console will open for you. However, if you're using a UK keyboard layout, then all you have to do is press the apostrophe or at symbol key and that will also open up the console for you. So let's go through some basic ones to begin with then. We're going to start out with one that's going to help you get around the place. This is toggling all map markers. So as you can see, if we open up my Pip-Boy here, I have a relatively fair amount of, uh, of map markers on my map. You know, not too many, mainly to be focused around in the northwest and the center area of the map. Now if we open up our console and type in TMM space 1 and then check back on our pit boy you can see that all of the map markers are now revealed on the map. Not something that I recommend if you're trying to go for a vanilla playthrough but uh, this uh, it, it can be very helpful if you're trying to get around to somewhere very quickly. Next up we have one that's going to help you if you get into a bit of a pinch. This is called Toggling God Mode. If you open up the console and type in TGM, you are going to enable God Mode. Now this does as you would expect, it means that you no longer use up any of your action points, so you have unlimited action points, you don't take any radiation hits when walking through water or going anywhere near radiation, and of course you don't take any damage from enemies. The next command can also help you if you get stuck or you, the game bugs or something like that. This is toggling collision. If you open up the console and type in TCL, as you can see, you can uh, you now remove the collision. So you can walk through walls, walk up in the sky, walk down through <laughs> through the, uh, the ground there. And uh, if you want to get rid of this, you can just again open up the console and type in TCL again and it will toggle it back off for you. Another command that you might want to memorize if you ever get stuck in a tight spot is the kill command. So if you open up the console, you're surrounded by enemies, you type kill all, press enter, close it. Every single enemy in the vicinity is going to be killed, as you can see here. Now just bear in mind, be quite careful as to when you use this. Make sure you're not around any essential NPCs because it is going to literally destroy everything in the area, as you can see from these two turrets here. Okay, this next command is kind of useful, kind of just interesting to use. This is the centering on cell command. So this is if you want to access a different area of the game. Now you can use it to access just the vanilla areas of the game, like Sanctuary. Or, as you can see what I've done here, is I've centered on the cell Sanctuary, pre-war Sanctuary, so where the game starts. To do this, all you have to do is again open up the console command, type in COC and then the code of the area, and you will teleport there immediately. This next command is all about adding things to your inventory. So you want to get you're running low on bobby pins. So what you're going to do? You're going to go player dot add item space bobby pins one thousand, aren't you? Wrong. That's not how it works. Sorry. There's a little step you need to do first of all. What you need to do is you need to open up the console, type in help space bobby space zero, and it's going to give you a list of the codes for for the items. And as you can see here, a bobby pin is just A. If it has a set a number of zeros before it, you don't need to put them zeros in. It's just after the string of zeros ends. So here we're gonna we're gonna type in player.addItem A space 10,000. Close the console, and as you can see in the top left corner, 10,000 bobby pins have been added to my inventory. Similar to the adding items command, you can also place items at your feet. Now this can be done for NPCs and items, so here I'm going to find the code for a bandit. Uh, you can use page up by the way to scroll up through the console. Mine's bound to the steam overlay which is why it's uh, having a little bit of a, uh, a spaz there. Uh, so now we've, we've got the code for a bandit, we're going to go player.place at me, the code for the bandit, space 10, and then as you can see 10 bandits, or well it's more like 30, 30 bandits are going to spawn right next to me. Another fun little command to do is sex change. So if you type in sex change into the command, 
it's going to change the sex of your character. This also ties into another command, which is show looks menu. This has changed from the previous games where it used to be show race menu, it's now show looks menu, and this just brings up the character customization menu that you get at the start of the game. Okay, so now we're going to get into modifying certain characteristics of your character. Here I'm going to change the health. So all you have to do is you have to type in player.modav health and then whatever variable you want to modify it by. As you can see, I've now increased my health by 40. And now if I open up the console again, I'm going to increase it by another 40 just by pressing the up arrow key and enter. And as you can see, it's increased it by 40 again. You can also use negative values to decrease the, the attribute if you so wish. So I'm going to minus 80 and return my health to normal. You can also increase your level using a similar command, which is player.set level and then the specified level you would like to be. Press enter and you're going to be that level. Here, I've maxed my character out at 50, although there is no level cap, so I haven't maxed it out. Just be careful with this because, as you can see, it is going to pop the achievements for achieving certain levels. So you're wandering around the wasteland and you come across a wrench. And you're looking at it and you're thinking, that's not big enough. You want it to be bigger. But all, so all you have to do is you have to open up the console, use your mouse, click on the wrench, and type in set scale and then a certain variable. If you want to get the default scale for the for the item first, you just type in get scale and it will it will show you the scale of the item. And then all you have to do is type in set scale and then a different variable and it will change it to that value. Sometimes you have to do a quick save and reload first for the change to actually occur. And as you can see, there is now a rather large pipe wrench sitting in the middle of Sanctuary. Unfortunately, if you pick up this pipe wrench and then equip it, it's not that big in your hand, but if you do then drop it again, it will be the same size as what you set it to. You don't just have to do this for items though, you can also do this for certain NPCs in the game. So here I've changed the scale of a rad roach to 10 times the size as what it normally would be. That's a pretty scary sight to see, I'm not gonna lie. You can also do it to yourself. So if you go into third person, click on yourself and type in set scale and then a certain value, you can turn yourself into a giant or an Ant-Man. Here you can see my character terrorizing Sanctuary as a giant human being. The last couple of commands I'm going to show you are related to time traveling. Not really. It's not quite that complicated. So first of all, we're going to look at set time scale. So first of all, what you're going to want to do is type in set time scale to and then a certain variable. Bear in mind that setting it to 30 is the default time scale. Setting it to 1 is real time, so for every second that passes in real life, one second passes in game. And then you can set it to be far and beyond way what the, what the developers intended it to be. So I'm going to set it to 10,000 and you can just watch the sun and the moon roll over and over and over. This can be very helpful if you're trying to get a certain effect for cinematics and things like that. And the final big command I'm going to show you is setting the game time. So first of all, you're going to want to find out what time it actually is so you can remember what format to type in the time scale. So all you have to do is type in get current time and then it will show you the current time in the console above. And then all you have to do after that is type in set game time to and then a certain variable and it will set the game time to that certain time. This is basically just an alternative to waiting to a certain time, but it can be pretty handy, especially if you're shooting cinematics and want to shoot at that certain specific time. These aren't the only commands, there are other commands such as TFC which will toggle the free camera, there's also FOV and then a certain variable which will set your character's field of view to that certain variable. And on top of that, there's also other ones such as unlock. So if you open up the console, click on a container or a door, type in unlock, and it will unlock that door or container for you. That's just a few of the basic ones. Go off and have some fun with them. Want my advice though? I advise that you make a copy of your save file and don't do this on a vanilla sort of playthrough. It might mess up a few things. Play responsibly, and I'm sure you'll have some fun. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I've been Major Meteor. And I'll catch you in the next one.